a very warm welcome to the Art Vlog Art Lovers with me, George Dopamine. The Art Vlog brings you to exhibition spaces and galleries across London, the southeast of England and beyond. And today it gives me great pleasure to bring you into the presence of a bona fide artistic legend and superstar, Michelangelo. Arguably an artist who's at the top of a tree. In his lifetime he was known in the Renaissance as El Divino. He was so lauded in his lifetime that three biographies are written about him. Obviously he has produced some of the most famous works in Western art like the Statue of David in France or the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel or his wonderful Pieta um, or even for goodness sake the Dome at St Peter's which he played a massive role in designing. However today the show at the British Museum is called Michelangelo The Last Decade. Now, obviously, in Britain, we'd have some, some, some works by him in the National Gallery, um, and we have one marble work, but we do have some fantastic collections of drawings, and that's what I'm expecting this exhibition to be focused on. I'm just really looking forward to being in the presence of Michelangelo for an hour or two this early evening in spring. So come and join me as we head to the British Museum's the Michelangelo The Last Decade. The last decades that the exhibition title refers to are really the last 30 or so years of Michelangelo's life. You can see him here and he was highly regarded by this time as a, one of the masters of the high renaissance, admired by popes and noblemen alike and he was in much demand for commissions and in fact he was summoned back in 1534 to Rome by Pope Clement VII to paint this which is projected in the gallery, um, the last judgment of fresco on the altar wall of the Sistine Chapel. Fresco painting was physically demanding and it must have been quite intimidating for a man approaching 60 to undertake this commission. And remember that he's working under the Sistine ceiling, probably his masterpiece that he produced between 1508 and 1512. And I love the fact that the exhibition displays drawings, preparatory drawings of The Last Judgment. And we can see how Michelangelo's ideas developed we see him constantly making changes as he explores the potential of different groups and figures. The complexity of the Last Judgment required constant planning and many of the early attempted um, preliminary drawings were changed before they reached the final fresco. I love the fact that you can see the fresco in the background projected onto the wall and to, to see where some of these drawings were included, maybe in a different form. As his ideas developed, the images like this one become firmer and he increasingly focuses on more on, on small details of every figure in the design. The wealth of preparatory drawings for The Last Judgment and, and the fact that you're drawn into Michelangelo's world makes this first room a um, real treat. We also learn throughout the exhibition about Michelangelo's friendships with a number of people including um, Tommaso di Cavalieri, a younger man from Rome who Michelangelo was struck by his manners and beauty. They remained friends for life and Michelangelo gave him gifts like this drawing um, which, which um, were very very well received.
Another uh, friend and correspondent of Michelangelo in this later period was Vittoria Colonia, a member of the Spirituali, a group of religious reformers who did not, unlike the Protestants, want to abandon Catholicism, but wanted to take a kind of more moderate route to reform. And we learn in, 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 in an exhibition which focuses a lot on Michelangelo's religious beliefs, that his own beliefs were influenced uh, by Vittoria's uh, deep spirituality. And um, he would exchange letters, poems, as well as art with Vittoria um, during this last period of his life. And it was clearly a friendship which meant a huge amount to both of them. One of the big themes of these last decades was that Michelangelo was in impossible demand. And so he, he, he went into partnership with artists to satisfy this demand from patrons who wanted numeral art, numerous artworks. And as you will see in this section, um, Michelangelo's partnership with Marcello Venusti um, saw Michelangelo producing compositional drawings that then Venusti used um, to produce into full-scale paintings like this jewel-like painting in its original frame. Um, sometimes both artists signed these, and um, it was a it was a um, it was an arrangement of mutual convenience. Venusti was an established artist who used his own skills to to inform the backgrounds of these paintings while staying true to Michelangelo's uh, original compositional ideas. De Volterra was another artist who Michelangelo collaborated with um, and who was also present at his deathbed and indeed looked after Michelangelo's possessions once he died. And we've seen some exquisite preparatory works for uh, De Volterra's own David and Goliath. One of the um, techniques the exhibition uses is to have actors pipe through the ceiling reading out extracts from Michelangelo's letters. And for me, this was a really good curatorial technique, especially because the letters or excerpts from them were nearby along with translations. And it made me um, get to feel closer to Michelangelo the man as he entered older age, along with the illnesses um, and worries about his family that accompanied him at this time. After the Last Judgment had been completed, Michelangelo was commissioned by Pope Paul III to produce two frescoes for the Pope's private Pauline Chapel, the Crucifixion of St. Peter, which you can see in a photograph here along with preparatory works, and the Conversion of St. Paul. It's really interesting actually because these works were seen as a lot less successful than the Sistine Chapel works. They were more like narrative paintings that were telling a story and maybe this was reflected in the fact that um, Michelangelo at this time was desperate to finish other works as well, particularly the tomb uh, that he was commissioned to write. Um, but anyway, we see the preparatory works for these, a bit like with The Last Judgment, along with a photo of one of the two major works from the chapel. The largest work in the show by Michelangelo is this cartoon of the Epiphany. It's actually made up of 26 joint sheets of paper 
um, according to the exhibition. And um, cartoons are notoriously fragile. They were preparatory works. They were never really meant to survive. And so this is the only full one to survive by Michelangelo. And it was for a, for a painting that was never, we think, produced. And Michelangelo um, passed it on to his pupil, Con, um, Condivi, who developed it into a painting which is shown next door. And it's quite interesting because um, Condivi obviously had a bit of trouble with this painting. It shows Michelangelo's skill. But both have been restored and reunited for the first time since the 1550s. So it's a special moment to see them together. as well that um, Michelangelo was in great demand as an architect and he was one of many who contributed to the building of the Sistine Chapel and personally I find these um, works less highly charged and, and interesting than some of the other of Michelangelo's works on display but it's important to recognize that this was a big part of, of, of his perceived role uh, during these last three decades. section of Michelangelo's work entitled Meditations and Crucifixion is incredibly intimate. You're drawn into this very special um, space which you can see here. And um, we know that Michelangelo took comfort in spiritual meditation. And we know that as he was getting older, he, um, he was beginning to reflect more and more on his own mortality. He was a believer and he believed that um, that he would go to heaven when he died and be reunited with his family. And he spent a lot of time reflecting on um, Christ's sacrifice. Um, and and this, this is kind of like a really important theme of the exhibition, which is sometimes missed, I think, in contemporary analysis of, um, of uh, Michelangelo. In this incredibly moving work, you can see here the, the trembling of the chalk. This is probably one of his last drawings and it kind of trembles um, as he's losing dexterity of his hands. And then there's these works on the crucifixion of Christ. And, and these we think are late works again that are not for any preparatory drawing. They're private meditations for Michelangelo, by Michelangelo. And um, as a result, this last room is, is where you get as close as you can do to the man in his last decades.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that exploration there of Michelangelo, the last decades from the British Museum. I'm actually out in the Sussex countryside today at Glyndebourne. Hopefully you can see behind me. Well, I've just seen an exquisite, um, s exquisite uh, concert of works by Bach. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here, obviously, to review the Michelangelo show. I saw that on Friday evening. It's now Sunday. And um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think you have to be aware straight away that with a Michelangelo show, um, uh, uh, focusing on his last decades, you're not going to get the kind of blockbuster that, you, we, you, that we saw with Donatello because the works generally are in situ somewhere or, um, or, or were never actually realised. And so as a result, we, we are left to rely on the preparation drawings um, of which Britain has a magnificent collection at the with the royal with the royal family's own collection and also the British Museum the Ashmolean as well and this was aided by some um, some 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 loans from places like the Louvre as well and um, I thought that these preparatory works do give you an incredibly intimate insight into the way that um, Michelangelo works so in that place in that sense this was a thumbs up I also feel that um, the curation of this show was absolutely spot on. Firstly, in the way that it projected some of the bigger set piece works onto walls so that we could see how the preparatory works, these intimate drawings by Michelangelo's hand, fitted into these. That was superb, really well done there. And I also love the way that the show was themed sometimes surrounding these preparatory works, sometimes surrounding individual friendships, and finally surrounding Michelangelo's own preoccupation with his, with his growing closeness towards death. I just thought it worked really, really well um, in that sense as well. There were certain bits that personally didn't interest me as much as architectural drawings, for example, for, for me, not as highly charged as some of his religious drawings. And that's another thing. This show reminds us that Michelangelo was a deeply religious man. A lot in the modern world is talked about his you know, speculations on his sexuality. But actually, his religious faith was absolutely crucial to him. And you got that at so many times, not least in this exquisite final room, which was the absolute highlight of the show. It was chapel-like. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, and it just reminded you about how he was pondering on his own mortality. So it was really special in this sense. And I suppose what this show did was remind us why Michelangelo was known as El Divino. Um, his genius is very clear in lots of these drawings, but also that he was a very human person, prickly in some ways, tense. And also the fact that he was under siege um, from all angles, it seemed, as, as, as an artistic superstar. His family relied on him and um, back in Florence but also popes and, and very rich patrons were constantly demanding of him and I suppose you have to remember that in his last three decades he was already the guy who had created David which stood proudly in Florence or the Sistine Chapel works are admired around the Renaissance world and so you got this idea of him being harangued harassed in a way and that made me kind of feel very much um, for the human Michelangelo as well and so I got came away, to put it bluntly, with a really intimate um, closeness, a feeling of intimate closeness to Michelangelo. Also, I thought that the, the use of actors' voices um, worked incredibly well. And so, um, and, and, and his letters were brilliant to read. And again, that increased that intimacy. So this is a thumbs up for me. Go along, not expecting an all singing, all dancing blockbuster with, with, with massive, colourful work and some of his most famous works go along to step into the world the intimate world of a genius and if you do that you won't regret it this show is on all the way until the 28th of July I think for the way the works curated and set out in this intimate show of over a hundred works by Michelangelo and close associates 20 pounds at the weekend 18 pounds in the week is very very good value um, I'm going to leave you now, but don't forget to subscribe to the Art Blog. Hit that notification bell. And if you enjoyed this show, I'm going to post links to the my Donatello review up here from last year and Raphael up here from even further back so that you can step even more into the Renaissance world.